So what does it mean for a series to be absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent? Well, if the series is absolutely convergent, that means that the absolute value of the series and the series itself, they're both convergent. For a series to be conditionally convergent, that means the series is convergent, but the absolute value of the series diverges. Now, for it to be divergent, that means both the original series and the absolute value of the series, they both diverge. So how do we use this in a problem? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to determine if the absolute value of the series converges. So let's say if it does. So if this is true, then this is also true. The original series converges as well. And so we say that the original series is absolutely convergent. Now, let's say if we analyze the absolute value of the series, and it's not convergent, but we find it to be divergent, what should we do? Well, in this case, we need to analyze the original series. So let's say the original series, we analyze it and found it to be convergent. What does this mean? It means that the original series is conditionally convergent. Now, let's say if we're analyzing the absolute value of the series, we find it to be divergent, and then we've analyzed the original series, and that diverges as well. Well, then we could simply say that the entire series is divergent. Now, let's go ahead and do an example problem. So let's say if we have the series cosine n pi divided by n cube. Would you say the series is absolutely convergent? Is it conditionally convergent? Or is it divergent? So what do we know about cosine n pi? When you plug in 1, you're going to have cosine pi. And cosine pi is negative 1. If you plug in 2, cosine 2 pi is 1. If you plug in 3, it's going to be negative 1 over 3 to the third, and so forth. So that's the pattern of what we have here. So what is the absolute value of the series? So if we take the absolute value of that expression, what will we get? Notice that the negative 1 and the 1 they will just stay positive one. The absolute value of cosine n pi, if n is an integer, this is simply equal to one because it's always going to alternate between negative one and one. So the absolute value of a sub n, this is a sub n, cosine n pi over n cube. So the absolute value of a sub n is just one over n cube. And so that's going to give us 1 over 1 cube plus 1 over 2 cube plus 1 over 3 cube and so forth. So that's the absolute value of the series. Now, is this series convergent or divergent? What would you say? Notice that we have the P series. We have the form 1 over n to the P. So P we can see it's 3. And recall that if p is greater than 1, the series converges. So if the absolute value of the series converges, then by the absolute convergence theorem, the original series must also converge. So therefore, we could say that the original series is absolutely convergent. Now let's move on to our next example. So let's say we have negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 divided by the cube root of n. 
So go ahead and determine if the series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or if it's divergent. So we have our a sub n term. So we need to determine the absolute value of a sub n. Negative 1 to the n plus 1, that will vary between negative 1 and positive 1. So what is the absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 1? That whole thing has to equal just 1. And so we could say that the absolute value of the series is going to be 1 divided by the cube root of n. Now, is this particular series, is it convergent or divergent? Well, we can rewrite this expression like this. The cube root of n is the same as n to the one-third. So notice once again, we have a p-series. This time, p is one-third. So because p is less than or equal to 1, then the absolute value of the series diverges. Now, what about the original series? Is it convergent or divergent? So let's write out a few terms. When n is 1, we're going to have negative 1 to the second power, which is positive 1, divided by the cube root of 1. And then when n is 2, it's going to be negative 1 over the cube root of 2. And then plus 1 divided by the cube root of 3, and then minus 1 over the cube root of 4, and then so forth. So notice that we have an alternating series. So to analyze this, we need to use the alternating series test. So the first thing we need to do is identify a sub n. So for the alternating series, this part is not included as a sub n. So the a sub n term, I mean just a sub n, is just the 1 over the cube root of n. Now what we need to do is try the divergence test on it. We need to show that the limit as n approaches infinity, we need to see if it's going to be 0. Now, 1 divided by the cube root of infinity, that's going to go to 0. So it passes the divergence test. Now, the second thing that we need to show is that a sub n is a decrease in sequence. So we need to show that a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n. So a sub n is just 1 over the cube root of n. a sub n plus 1, that's this. Now, this is always going to be true. Here we have a larger denominator, which means the whole fraction is going to be smaller. So a sub n is a decrease in sequence. Therefore, this series, the original series, converges by means of the alternating series test. So let's summarize what we know. First, we analyze the absolute value of the series, and we found it to be divergent. Then we checked the original series based on the alternate series test, and we found that to be convergent. So what can we say about the original series? Is it divergent, conditionally convergent, or absolutely convergent? So based on this information, the original series is conditionally convergent. And so that's the answer for this problem. Now let's move on to our next example. Let's say if we're given this particular series. So we have negative 1 raised to the n times n cubed divided by n cubed plus 5. So first, let's write the expression for the absolute value of the series. The absolute value of negative 1 to the n is simply 1. So we could say this expression is going to be 1 times n cubed, or simply n cubed, divided by n cubed plus 5. So let's see if the absolute value of the series converges or diverges. So let's start with the divergence test. Let's take the limit 
as n goes to infinity. So if we multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over n cubed, we're going to get this. This is going to be 1 over 1 plus 5 over n cubed. And so as n goes to infinity, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 5 times 0. So this whole thing becomes 0. So then it's 1 over 1 plus 0, which is just 1. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n did not equal 0. So therefore, that means that this particular series diverges. Now what about the original series? The one without the absolute value. Will it converge or will it diverge? So once again, this is going to be an alternating series because the negative 1 to the n is going to change the sign. And so for the alternating series test to work, the divergence tests must work as well. So what is the limit as n approaches infinity for negative 1 to the n times n cubed over n cubed plus 5? What's going to happen? Well, if we take out this term, we know that the limit is going to go to 1. But if we introduce negative 1 to the n, then the limit is going to vary. When n gets very large, it's going to alternate between negative 1 and 1 and negative 1 and 1. So therefore, the limit doesn't go to one value. So we could say that the limit, it does not exist because it's constantly going to oscillate between 1 and negative 1. So if the limit doesn't exist, then we could say that the limit as n goes to infinity for a sub n does not equal 0, which means that not only it fails the divergence test, but it also fails the alternating series test. So therefore, we could say that the original series diverges. So if the original series and the absolute value of the series diverges, then we simply say the whole series is divergent. And so that's it. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how to tell if a series is going to be absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or simply divergent.